Ready? Finish it. Location known as 85 Green Meadow Drive within the township of Sumter. 84 Green Meadow. Oh, thank you. Yes, I did. And um, approximately what time did you go out on that run? Approximately 10 30 ish. And do you know if um, how long it took you to respond to 84 Green Meadow from the time you heard and were called out to the location? Two minutes and 58 seconds. And when you responded to that location, were you responding alone or were you with someone else? With someone else. And who was that? Officer Cox. What, do you know his first name? Jerry Cox. And sir, do you keep describe for the jurors what that locate, what is located at 84 Green Meadow? 84 Green Meadow is in a mobile home community in Sumter Township. It's a trailer park with multiple trailers in it. Did you um, proceed to enter the, um, the location of 84 Green Meadow? Yes. Do you remember if you or Officer Cox entered first? Officer Cox did. And how far behind were you from Officer Cox? A couple seconds. And when you entered, were there any adults present at that location that you saw? Yes. Did you? Where did you, what adult did you see first, if you remember? The first adult that I seen was Candace Diaz. And where was she located when you entered, sir? She was down the hallway in the back of the house. And who, who did you see next? Bradfields. And where was he located when you saw him? He was in the back bedroom securing the dog. All right, and the person you're uh, identified as Brad Fields, did you know his name then, that morning on January 1st, or did you come to learn it later? I learned it later that day. All right, and do you see that person who you came to know as Brad Fields present here to, in court? Yes. Where is he? Sitting here on the end. All right, and what's he wearing? Black suit. Did you uh, identify the defendant, Your Honor? Sorry, Flag. Did you... Um, See any other adults? Yes. Who? Uh, Cynthia. Cynthia Diaz? Cynthia Diaz, yes. And did you know her at that time? No. Where was she located? Uh, she was in the bathroom. And sir, did you see a little child? Yes. Where? Laying on the floor. Where? In the bathroom. What was going on, with, if anything, in the bathroom with that little child? Upon me warming into the bathroom, nothing was going on. No, was anybody doing anything for her? Not at that moment. Did she appear to, um, what did she, how did she appear to you at that time? To me, she appeared dead. She appeared lifeless. Sir, were you wearing a body camera? Yes, I was. Was it operational that day? Indeed, it was. And do you have any ability in that body camera to operate it yourself, turn it on and off? Yes. Did you continue, did it operate continuously or did you turn it on and off at times? Throughout the majority of the, my time on the run, it was, I believe I turned it off once and then I had to, I eventually had to replace that camera because the battery died. Okay. So, for the, this run, in the beginning of the run, 
as you arrived and afterwards, was that body cam running continuously or not? It ran up all the way until I left, I went to the hospital, and I went back to the department with evidence, and I believe at that point I did turn it off. Um, Your Honor, we have shown to counsel this body camera. They have been pre-admitted. Um, Any objection? No. So what would you like to do now? I'm going to play them by clips and identify them by um, evidence tag numbers. That's fine, thank you. Okay. I'm going to show you, this is going to be in um, People's Exhibit number 131. Thank you. Sir, I'm going to ask you, um, I'm going to show you what represents your arrival and ask you if this is the scene that you're testifying occurred that morning, okay, on arrival. Okay. What are you doing right now? Walking up to the house. Do you, can you identify that female, sir? Candace Diaz. Jerry Cox. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know you were back there. All the way out? Yep, and always. Why? Who's moving this yes. child? You guys get out of here. Uh, at the time I was moving her, um, but Officer Jerry Cox and I picked her up and moved her to the living room. And why is that, sir? So we had better access to uh, perform CPR. our dispatch to relay the rescue personnel to come faster. During the time that you and Officer Cox were attempting res resuscitation, was there any response from Gabrielle Barrett? No. You heard a male voice that um, says a number of things, including She's been down about a half hour. Did you hear that? Yes. Whose voice was, do you know who said that? Yes. Who? Brad Fields. Did he say that in your presence? Yes. You also heard this male voice that said, she's been up all night. Did you hear that? Yes. Who said that? Brad Fields. When you were there, did anybody, did you, you noticed these red markings on her body, correct? Correct. Did you notice the red markings on her body? Yes. Where, where did you, where did you see them? I first noticed them on her feet, knees, and on her arms. Um, who said, did you hear the male voice say she's all bloody? I believe Officer Cox was asking how did she get all bloody? Was any explanation ever provided by the defendant? I don't recall if he said anything at that time. Did you come in your experience, everyday experience, to know what caused those, what those red marks appear to be? Yes, I believe that they were caused by scalding. Based on your everyday knowledge of Correct. Did you see skin with regard to this body of Gabrielle Barrett? Yes. Um, when you look closely at the injuries, you could see pieces of skin that were, where they were still hanging on to the other parts of skin that were not 
scalded. So there was skin. Would it be fair to describe it as peeling or something? Yes, it, it seemed as if it was a, a bad burn and the skin was peel, peeling back. We heard Officer Cox talk about um, picking up and trying to get the ambulance to respond quicker. Is that mm -hmm. true? Correct. Did the ambulance ultimately respond? They yes, they they responded. About how long after after what we saw here did the ambulance arrive? I believe it was about fifteen minutes. And sir, during that time that. You and Officer Cox were there. Did did you continue your recitation efforts? Yes. Was there ever any response? No. From um, From whom? From Gabrielle Barron? No, there was not. Any signs of life at any point? No. Were you checking the entire time? We would perform compressions and would check for a pulse. Ultimately, when the ambulance arrived, what did they what did they decide to do with the body? As soon as the ambulance arrived, uh, Gabby was carried out by fire personnel to the ambulance. Did they continue in your presence recitation? I, I did not observe what happened inside the ambulance. Okay, and where what did you do? Uh, as she was being carried out, I was contacting Sergeant Detective Tolf to advise of the situation. And did any of the adults that you have identified previously leave the premises when, when Gabrielle Barrett was removed from the premises? Yes, when she, when she left in the ambulance, Candace and Cynthia left. And what about Brad Fields? Bradfield stayed in the trailer with officers. And were you, you were one of the officers who stayed in the trailer, correct? Correct. Was there any other officers who stayed in the trailer? At first there was Officer Cox and I. As time went by, Sergeant Detective Tolf arrived and um, our Chief Luke arrived. Um, were you able to make observations of Bradfield's demeanor? Yes. Can, is there anything you can tell you that stood out to you about his demeanor at this time? For the situation that we were in, he seemed to be, he didn't act as if it was Objection. a this big thing, deal. This thing. I'm not gonna lie to Alright. Sir? Did you have some interaction with Bradfield? Yes. Did you um, have interaction around that, his phone? Yes. Tell us about that, please. Well, once Detective Tolth arrived on scene, he advised that to take. we took the phone and all of his phone calls were monitored. And um, Let me just interrupt you. Instead of using pronouns, would you just use their name? Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> so I took Field Bradfield's phone and monitored all of Fields's calls from there on out. Okay. And when you say monitoring, what do you mean? Uh, I held his phone in my Bradfield's phone in my hand, and the phone was on speakerphone during any conversation. And do you know a reason for doing that? Uh, preservation of evidence. Potential evidence that might have been on the phone, is that right? Correct. Sir, um, during the time that you were there, did you hear a, were you present when Mr. Fields had a phone call with somebody he referred to as his aunt? Yes. And was that... And that was part of that was on your body time as well. Is that right? The the phone conversation was yeah. And this would be Exhibit One Thirty Two.
Can you cut it up? And is it admitted? It's what it was pre admitted. It's on 32. Can we go off the record? I'll speak. I'll rise for the jury. Okay. Okay, it turns the room. Turn it. Bring the jury out. Thirty-five, one thirty-three, one thirty-four, one thirty-five, one thirty-six, and one thirty-seven. Is that correct? That's correct. I've seen you. And you have no objection to no the objection. Very good. Go forward. What we'll do is to each one the next time we'll just go. You know, this is the exhibit, and go for it. Like that. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you. Um, Mr. Chairman, I'm going so this would be 132, and are you, were you present when this occurred, sir? Yes. Is this on your body cam? Yes. I don't know. Okay, stop. Stop. Can you stop? Yeah. Okay. Take that microphone that you have that you're speaking in. Take the speaker and put it to that microphone. Do you understand what I'm asking? With, with the microphone. No, no, no. I've asked that you. Yes. All right, go ahead. before I took custody of the phone. And he just made that phone conversation, had that phone conversation in your presence, is that right? Correct. And, um, oh, he was on the phone. He wasn't talking to you. Correct. Okay. And was that, did that clip in, at, represent his demeanor throughout your interactions or did it change? No, that was fair. I'm going to all, I'm going to all show you a clip of that is 133. 
And in, who, do you know who's included in this in this clip? Are you familiar with it? Are you familiar with that? I'm not familiar with it. The... Was there a time you indicated the detective told the ride? Is that correct? Correct. Um, I'm going to show you a clip of that arrival. And see if this represents what happened now. All right? Okay. And why is this baby current? I don't know. I don't know. Did you talk to him? Not much. No, this is the monster. Yeah. So you didn't know this baby was on murder? I noticed that shit when I was doing CPR here. So Something, it looked like bloody. It was burnt, it looked bloody to me, not burnt. So you, you don't know nothing about that? No, she was so a baby. Right right she was up on that. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Who's talking? Sir, do you know? Well, there's Sergeant Detective Tolf talking with Bradfields. And then there came a time where you actually did take the file, correct? Correct. Did Bradfields ask or request that you do anything with this file? I don't recall him asking us to do anything with it. Okay. Did did he make or receive phone calls? Yes. While you had it? Yes. Did you cooperate in allowing him to make and receive phone calls, sir? Yes. And what's going to be next is a clip of somebody who he refers to as Bobo. Are you, are you familiar with that? I remember the phone call, yes. Do you remember him referring to the person who was talking and he was speaking to as Bobo? He advised that it was his uncle. Um, did you come to know anything about this person, Bobo? He advised that he was in... Right. Um, this will be both 134 followed by 137, which is a conversation with this person I, he called Bobo, who was his uncle. Um. Uh, this whole situation is all confusing to me. Gabby, like, drowned in a tub, and we hurried, freaked out, got, called 911, etc. She can tell she's got water in her lungs. Don't know what's going on there. I need to be at the hospital. That's freaking me out. I don't know what's going on with that child. I think they can't be. Is that what's going on here? Very much. I thought you were using CPR on the yeah, I guess, yes, pretty much, yes. That's what I'm getting out of this, bro. I said yes, that's what I am getting out of this, bro. that were damp 
but that's and I believe I remember her hair being damp, but that's all the what I recall about any water in the bathroom. Is there any splashing water on the floor anywhere else? Not that I noticed. Was there any um, was was her body wet in any way? Not. No. Was any of the adults here to have any water on them? No. Were you? Did you bend down in the bathroom? Yes. Did you get any water on you? I did not. After, um, how long did you stay at that trailer? The first time I was... Right, at that, and that, after the first <coughs> arrival. I would say over an hour. And when you, when you left to go somewhere else, was it, there an officer there? Yes. Before you left the trailer, <coughs> Did you walk through the whole thing or and look around or did you just go in the bathroom and attend to her in the living room? Um, before leaving, I just attended to her. Did you look in the um, bedrooms at all? Uh, no. I, I, there was a time where I looked in to check on the other infant that was in the bedroom, but other than that, no. Why did you leave? To go to the hospital to obtain Candace Diaz's phone. And did you also receive information confirming what you suspected when you were at the hospital? Regar regarding the assault, yes. What about the, the death? Um, what did they advise that she wasn't seized? They being, I'm sorry. Uh, hospital staff. How long were you out at the hospital to request Candace and PS's phone? I was probably there for about 20 minutes. Sir, were the phone that you, obviously the phone that Mr. Fields had was operational, correct? Correct. Do you know if the phone you got from Candace Diaz was operational? It was. Did either of those phones appear to have called 911? I didn't look to see if an emergency call was made. What did you do after you got that phone? After I obtained the phone, I transported it back to the police, Sumter Police Department and turned it over as evidence. Did Bradfield's phone remain at the trailer for the time being? I do believe so. When you returned, did you return to that trailer? Yes. Um, about what time, do you know? I couldn't say exactly what time. When you returned, was Mr. Fields still present? No. Defendant? No. Was there anybody present when you returned with, with the exception of law enforcement? No. Did there, when you returned, did you discover that there was a some sort of legal document that you were going to use to search? Yes. And what was that? A search warrant. As a result of ha obtaining a search warrant, did you begin to search? Yes. Did you do a search into the bathtub? Yes. Did you recover any evidence from that tub? Yes. Um, sir, I'm going to play at this point what is People's Exhibit number 135 and 136. Before I do so, I want to assure that there's no objection and that the defense has been duly um, had an opportunity. Objection. To do so. No objection. Okay, so this will be 135 and 136. You see some hands and a flashlight. These hands and flashlight. Those are mine.
at this point, do you have any idea what you're pulling out of there? Not, no, I, at that point, I did not. Did you go back again to look at what you part pulled out after kind of taking a, a look around the bathroom? Yes. Go ahead. This is one thing to started to look at it closer, I was able to see what I believed were ridges of, as of a, like a fingerprint. And where, what did you do with that skin that you pulled out of the ground? I left it in the bathtub and photographed it. And um, at some point did um, other crime scene lab people respond? Yes. Who were they? Um, a team with the Michigan State Police. And was did, did you leave it there for them to process? Yes. Sir, um, did you continue to explore the drain in the tub? Not much after that. Did you pull anything else out of the drain? It was some hair. And what did you do with the hair you pulled out? Left it in the bathtub also. Did you look around the child's bedroom? Yes. Did you make any observations when you were looking around what looked to be a child's bedroom um, about the bed? Yes. The bed was off the floor and leaned up against the wall. I'm going to sh show you what's been marked as people's proposed, will, which, well, what is people's exhibit 119, a picture, and ask if, um, this fairly and accurately represents the bedroom that you, view that you had, but I want to make sure that council is aware of the photo and has no objections. It's a no objection. Okay. What, sir, would be in the in this photo in the bot, in the bottom part of? of the left side. Oh, uh, that's the the mattress that was folded up, up, leaned up against the wall. Did there appear to be any bedding in that child's bedroom? I didn't notice any. Did your photos show any? No. Sir, you indicated that you, um, <coughs> you indicated that you collected phones, is that right? Correct. I'm going to show you what is a, what will be marked as people's proposed exhibit 139. It's an evidence, it's a box with evidence tags on it. I ask you if you know what's contained in this box. May I approach the witness, Your Honor? What's in there? Oh, uh, yes. What's in there? Cell phones. Your Honor, I'm going to ask that the um, witness be permitted to open the box. And no objection. Um, no objection. we're going to admit the box is 139 and go from there. What's 
What's contained in, the, in that box, sir? Multiple phones. And where were those phones seized from, sir? Uh, throughout the house. Do you, do you know how many phones are in there? the phone that you um, took at the hospital? Yes. Do you, can you, can you show me the phone you took at the hospital, you know? I'm going to ask that this phone be marked. Okay, this will be 130, this will be 138. And I'm going to show you the phone. Sir, do you have any objections to the this? Sure. No objection. Sir, I'm going to show you what's the March is People's Health Exhibit number 138 and ask you if that is the phone that you seized from Candace Diaz at, at the hospital on January 15th of 18. Yes, it is. Sir, in there is that, do you know which phone in that box of phones was um, the one that was seen, that Brad Fields was using? on that on New Year's Day that year. Yes. Okay. This is going to be marked as People's Exhibit number 140. No judgment. So what is in People's Exhibit number 140? Uh, Bradfield's is cell phone. And we are moving to admit. I, I believe there's no objection. No objection. No objection. No. Of course it is. Sir, did you find any other um, towels besides the one you told us about in the bathroom? Yes. Where? Um, I found them just outside the bathroom. All right. All right. I have nothing to learn this week. Examination. Thank you. Anyone who directed you toward the restroom or the bathroom in the trailer? No. Okay, so. They moved the microphone. I apologize. Um, but when you, you, how did you know to go to the back of the trailer then? I could hear voices. Okay, so you just followed the voices there. Maybe that's where the action was happening, correct? Correct. When you got to the bathroom, did you enter the bathroom? Eventually, yes. I, don't, okay. I had to let people out so I could get in. I understand. So you didn't initially go over the threshold. There were too many people in. Is that safe to say? Yeah. Okay. So it was Officer Cox, correct? Correct. Cynthia Diaz, correct? Correct. Candace Diaz. Correct. Correct. Uh, Brad Fields? Fields was not in the bathroom. Not in the bathroom. Um, and of course, Gabby Bear, correct? Correct. Okay. Her body was on the floor, right? Correct. Do you recall um, the positioning of her body? She was laying on her back, kind of in a diagonal, and her feet were towards the the doorway of the bathroom. The feet were toward the door. Yes. Okay. And when you when you entered the or got to the bathroom, um, nobody was administering at that point CPR, correct? Correct. That you had just come in seconds before, right? That's safe to say. Correct. Yes. And it was um, determined by you and Officer Cox, you needed to get the body out of the bathroom. It was too small of a space, right? 
Yes. To, to do your job, what you properly need to do, you need to get it, get the body to another space, and you chose the living room. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And at some point, you, you sort of stepped in because uh, it, it appeared from the video that Cynthia Diaz attempted to to grab the ankles of Gabby Barrett and move the body, correct? Correct. And you stepped in and said, hey, this is my job. I'm going to take the body. We're going to move it. Correct. Okay. And so initially, you you grabbed her by the ankles, Gabby, by the ankles, correct? Correct. And you start to drag her out of the bathroom, right? Correct. Okay. And as you're dragging her out of the bathroom, you drag her past the threshold, right? Correct. Go through, get into what, a hallway? Yes. Is that correct? Okay. And then you and Officer Cox lift her body, take her to the living room. Correct. Correct? Okay. Now, initially in the living room, you um, began to administer CPR, correct? Correct. Okay. You did that for how long? A few minutes? Maybe. And then Officer Cox, he to took over. Yes. Okay. The videos that we saw, that's all from your point of view from your body cam. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Thank you. And you stated um, when you were testifying that, um, excuse me, <clears throat> that Gabby's hair appeared to be damp. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. And there was a towel that was draped over her body. Is that correct to say? Correct. And that towel was dry, correct? Yes. The other towels, which I believe you stated were underneath her body or around her body, um, you don't recall if they were dry or wet. Is that safe to say also? Why? Well, I, I said they, they were damp. They were damp. Okay. Thank you for clarifying. And the, um, I believe you were asked if you observed, if you observed any water um, in the bathtub or anywhere else in the bathroom. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. And in fact, you didn't. Um, you didn't observe water in the bathroom, right? Correct. But you also weren't focusing on the bathtub at that time. You were focusing on Gabby. Is that correct? Correct. So you didn't look into the bathtub to see if there was water, right? Correct. Okay. Now, You were at the location when, when all of the other adults and, and the, Gabby's body was there before she was taken to the hospital, correct? Correct. And when she was taken to the hospital through the ambulance, Candace Diaz and Cynthia Diaz, they left with the ambulance, right? Yes. So you're there, Brad Fields is there, is Officer Cox still there? Yes. It, at this point, Officer Tope, or I'm sorry, Detective Tope is not there yet, correct? Correct. Okay. So, at that time, you did begin to look around the location, the, the trailer for something of evidentiary value. Is that safe to say? Mm, uh, I'm, when... It was the three of us in there. I stayed right at the entrance of the, the hallway to prevent anyone from going down to the crime scene. Okay, fair enough. But at some point you leave and you go to the hospital, right? Correct. And you also go to the police department, correct? Correct. You went to the police department after you went to the hospital to drop off the phone you got off of Candace Diaz, correct? Correct. Did you go to the police department just that one time, or did you go a second time with the phone you got from Brad Fields? Do you recall? I don't recall exactly, but I do. If if it was left in the trailer, I would have took it with the rest of the evidence when I ended. When I when I was finally done, I transported many phones back. Okay. So let me just clarify. When you transported the many phones back, are you saying that you transported them all at that one time with Candace's phone, or did this happen later? It happened later. Okay. Thank you for clarifying that. Now, um, excuse me. Do you recall 
the amount of time between when you left the trailer <coughs> to the other locations, hospital and the, the police department, and came back. Do you know how long you were gone? Approximately. An hour and a half. Hour and a half? Maybe. Okay. And do you know, during the time you were not present at the trailer, were there other civilian witnesses or anyone in that trailer at that time? Do you know? I don't know. Was there anybody there when you left? Yes. Was it just Mr. Field? When I left, when I left, Field was not there. He was not. So that's my. There was no civilians there when I left. Hey, that's fine. As far as um, other police officers, were there? Uh, which police officers were left at the location when you took off to go to the hospital? When I left, I believe Chief Luke and Officer Cox were still on scene. Okay, so Chief Luke had arrived, so he and Officer Cox were there, you believe, when you left? Correct. Do you know if other officers came to the scene during that hour and a half that you were gone at the hospital and the police department? Yes. Other, let me rephrase that because it may have been confusing. Other than Chief Luke and Officer Cox, do you know if other officers came in and out of that location? In and out of the location, I don't know. You don't know. Fair enough. And did you observe um, any vomit on? Gabby Barrett's body. I do recall noticing what I observed to be vomit in her hair and in her nostrils when we were performing CPR. Okay. Now, when you returned to the um, to the trailer, um, oh, I'm sorry. Let me back up. Did you also observe vomit on on some of the towels at that time? I didn't observe the vomit until later. Okay, so at that time you did not see vomit on any towel. Correct. Okay. Now, you come back to the location, correct? Yes. And it's at that point that you begin to process the scene for to, to try to identify, mark, um, anything of evidentiary value. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And were you at the scene alone while you were processing? For the majority of the time, yes. Okay. When there was somebody else there with you, was that at the beginning of the scene? Were you processing the scene, or did somebody come later? Um, in the when I when I arrived back there, Sergeant Casey was on scene, um, and then he left when I was there, and then throughout my processing of the scene, you had several. Several officers showed up. Officers from your department. Correct. Okay. And it wasn't until later that individuals from the Michigan State Police came. Also, correct. Correct. Okay. Now, when you're processing the scene and you're looking for items, um, you're not collecting those items. Is that correct? Correct. You are searching for them and you are marking them in some way. Is that accurate? Photographing them. Very well. So you're taking photos of them. That's a photo record. Rather than using markers, you're taking photos. Right. That's my process. That's your process. Fair enough. Okay. Now, the items that you, um, the items that you were looking at, looking for, um, when you were doing that, you, you did find a few towels, correct? A couple, a few, okay. there was some towels. A couple. How many did you find? I believe there was two towels. Okay. Were these the towels you said you found just outside the door? Yes. Were those damp? Yes. Did those have vomit on them? Yes. You took pictures of those, correct? Correct. Did you take a picture of them together? I, I don't recall what sequence of photos I took. That, I understand, but my question is, do you know, do you remember, did you take pictures of them, say the two towels, together? 
or individual or individual. Yeah, I can't. I know I took pictures of the towels. I can't. I can't exactly remember if they were two towels laying next to each other, or I took a picture of one and then a picture of another. Fair enough. Did you move those towels at any time when you were taking pictures? Yes. Okay. You went into the bedroom that was um, displayed on on a picture, which um, was purported to be Gabby Barrett's bedroom. Correct. Correct. Okay. And you testified that there was a, uh, a mattress that was leaned up against the wall, right? Correct. Did you move that mattress? Yes, at some point I did. Okay. You moved it um, within the room, onto the floor. How did you move it? I maneuvered it to the floor where it was laying down on the floor. Okay. And this is a crime scene, right? Correct. Okay. And your job at this point is to process the crime scene to find things of evidentiary value, right? Yes. And you're wearing gloves, right? Correct. Because that's, professionally, that's that's what you do, right? That's part of your process, correct? Yes. Okay. And during the time you were processing the scene, did you, and you're, you're touching certain items, um, certain items of evidentiary value, are you using multiple sets of um, what I was, uh, would assume are latex gloves? Yes, there was. I went through several sets of gloves. Okay. And when you were done with each one of those sets, how did you dispose of those gloves? I can't remember what I did with every pair of the gloves that I wore, but okay. some of them ended up in my squad car. Um, some of them I kept in my evidence box, and I not only, I'm not 100% sure where they all were. Did you dispose of any of them in the garbage bags at the location? I don't recall doing so. Is it possible? It's possible. Okay. And uh, you you testified at the preliminary examination that was held in, on May 10th of this year, correct? Correct. Okay. And I'm referring to page 80. Um, it looks like probably the lines one through four. I'm going to start on uh, page 79 at the very beginning. Question. This is actually a follow-up to another question. So, Question. No, I understand that. What I'm asking is, did you move the towels? Answer, yes. Your Honor, I, I, I object to this process. I don't know if it's peachy, or brushing my flesh, what's going oh, on. Really? We can't read it. Okay. Answer yes. Question. Okay. And you touched them, but you had, I am assuming, gloves on. Answer. Absolutely. Question. Okay. Okay. Did you um, use the same pair of gloves throughout the um, throughout the search, or did you switch gloves? Switch gloves every once in a while. Answer. I used multiple sets. Question. Okay. Okay. And how did you dispose of them? Answer. In the garbage. Question in the garbage there at the location? Answer, yes. Is that accurate as to what you testified to? If that's what it says, then that's what I testified to. Very well. And you stated that when you were, when you were observing Gabby Barrett's body before um, before she was removed from the location that you observed what you referred to, you referred to them as scalding one, correct? Correct. You said they appeared to be burns or bad burns, right? Correct. And you found, um, you found skin, what you believe to be skin later on in the bathroom, is that correct? Correct. Okay. And when you, you stated that when you looked at those pieces of skin that you believed to be skin, that you recognized them as skin because they had ridges of fingerprints. Is that correct? You said they had ridges similar to what a fingerprint would Similar to fingerprints. Okay. I have no further questions. 
Redirect. Sir, on your um, on your body cam video, would it reflect where these gloves went? It should. Okay. scientist with the Michigan State Police. And how long have you been with the, in the Michigan State Police? About four years. And how long have you been a forensic scientist? About four years. Uh, did you uh, have to go through any uh, training uh, or education to get there? Yes, to work as a forensic scientist you need a bachelor's degree in a natural science. My bachelor's degree is from Oakland University in the area of biology. After I graduated, I um, did an internship with the Michigan State Police at the Sterling Heights Forensic Laboratory for a few months, and after that I was hired in as a forensic scientist. At that point I began my training, which was approximately six months long, and at the end of the training um, I was then released to perform casework. At this training, what sort of things were you learning? So the training is divided up into different modules, um, and for me the area was body fluid identification. So there's modules for blood testing, semen testing, saliva testing, as well as just general evidence handling and packaging. And then I also do um, learned how to write up reports, testify in court, and also um, at, during this point I also learned how to go to crime scenes and process crime scenes. What about uh, processing of any evidence that you collected at a scene? Do you do any of that? If the evidence collected was biological in nature, then yes, I could um, process that back at the lab. Okay, do you have any training on how to do that? Yes. Who did you receive that training from? The training is provided by the Michigan State Police. My training occurred at the Sterling Heights Laboratory. My supervisor would be the one to sign off on my training, but I did learn from uh, my other colleagues as well. Uh, how many times have you uh, gone to scenes to process scenes? I think I've been to about 20 scenes. And how many uh, other cases have you worked on where you've processed biological evidence? I'm not sure how many cases. I know that I've processed upwards of a thousand evidence samples. Do you have a specific set of procedures or protocols you follow when you're processing a crime scene? Yes. And what about when you're testing biological evidence? Do you have a similar set of procedures and policies? There are different procedures and policies, but yes, there are policies in place. Are those policies and procedures, are they, um, are they Michigan State police policies or are they countrywide policies? Um, they're Michigan State police policies, but they are reviewed by an accreditation board um, that is a national accreditation board. At this point, Your Honor, I would move uh, for the qualification of this witness as an expert in uh, body fluid identification. Any objection? No objection. Court of the seat. Thank that you. That means that she can testify as an expert. She can give her expert opinion in that area. However, as the judge of the fact, you can give her whatever weight you want. You can believe her. You don't have to because you're the judge of the fact. You may proceed. Thank you, Judge. Oh, and also, she can give her opinion as a lay witness can You know what I'm she can give her opinion as an expert in here. She's Thank you, Your Honor. Did you uh, respond to a scene on January 1st of 2018? Yes, I did. Do you remember the location of that scene? It was in Sumter Township. Do you remember the street? I believe it was 84 Green Meadow Drive. Thank you. Uh, what was your role um, that day? I was responding to the crime scene to process the crime scene for any evidence um, related to a possible homicide. I was there with a couple other members of our crime scene response team, and our job was to photograph, document the crime scene, measure the crime scene, and again, to collect any evidence that may be related. In your report, you refer uh, to your duties performed as a CSRT leader. What does that mean? 
So I did respond as a crime scene response team leader in this case. For every crime scene, we assigned one person to be the leader of that crime scene, which simply means that they are the point of contact for the agency, and they're also the person that makes sure that everyone has water, is taking breaks, anything that the scene team might need. So you were on lead on this scene investigation? Yes. Who else was with you? You said you had partners? Yes, the responding, the first responder that got to the scene was actually from the Northville Laboratory, the laboratory director, Glenn Hall. And then shortly after, the team from Sterling Heights, which is where I am from, uh, responded. That included myself, Katie Shigelniak, and Michael Boylan. Uh, when you arrive to a scene, what's the first thing that you do? We typically have a pre-scene briefing with the agency that is um, handling the crime scene. So in this case, it was an officer from Sumter Township PD. And then after we have the pre-scene briefing, we kind of make sure that we know that what they are expecting of us before we go in. We then make sure that we have a search warrant. And then once we have all of those things, we start to document the crime scene and take photos, basically starting from the outside and moving our way in. Uh, is there you have to check if you have a search warrant before you do any of this? We typically do, yes. Did, was there a search warrant on this case? There was a search warrant. Um, the first search warrant that we had gave permission to, I believe, take photographs and measure the crime scene. And then I made sure that we got a second search warrant that gave permission to collect evidence. So I want to understand that you photographed and processed the scene on one day and you collected evidence on a second day? That's how it worked out. The second search warrant came in shortly after midnight on January 2nd, and so it wasn't until we got that second search warrant that we actually started collecting the evidence. So when you say you received it the next day, it was after midnight, but had you left the location that day yet? No, we hadn't. What time did you arrive on that location? About 9.30 p.m. on January 1st. And what time did you leave that location? Somewhere between 5 and 6 a.m. on January 2nd. May I approach the witness, Your Honor? Okay. I'm going to show you what's previously been marked as People's Exhibits 57 and 58. Do you recognize those? Yes, I do. Okay. And what are those images to pick? These are two images of the house on 84 Green Meadow Drive. Move for the admission of People's 57 and 58. Yes. Now, can I put 57 on? Amen. What are we looking at here? This would be the front and side of the trailer home. Uh, and the front door, uh, would that be located uh, right here? Yes. That would be right in about the center of the photograph? Yes, and that's the door that we entered through. And can I get 58, please? What are we looking at here? This would be the other side or the back side of the trailer home. Thank you. Uh, when you process a, a crime scene, you said that you were a body fluid uh, identification person. What sort of things do you do? So when I go to a crime scene as a biologist, I am typically looking around with a bright light or an alternate light source, anything that might help me find any biological fluids um, or evidence that might be of interest for the biology unit. Okay, you said a bright light. When you say a bright light, what are you using? Um, basically, it's just a big flood light, just to provide extra lighting in the scene. And you said alternate light source. What's an alternate light source? An alternate light source is a basically like a flashlight, um, but it emits a certain wavelength. And if you wear goggles with that wavelength, then it can help you identify areas that fluoresce, um, which may be an indicator of a biological fluid. Is that similar to like what you would see in a movie where they spray something and they look at it through the light and it glows at you? We wouldn't spray anything with the alternate light source, but it is similar to what you see typically depicted on TV shows and movies where they apply a blue light and things glow. Did you process this scene? With an alternate light source? Yes. Yes. Did you find uh, many things of interest in this scene? I did find multiple areas of um, reddish brown staining, which is typically um, consistent with blood staining, as well as some areas of fluorescence. I want to start, uh, I suppose we'll go room by room because that might be the easiest way to do it. Did you observe uh, anything of uh, importance in the kitchen? 
In the kitchen, I believe the only item we collected was a piece of paper towel that had some reddish brown staining on it, and I did some presumptive testing on that paper towel, which indicated the possible presence of blood, so we collected that item. I'm going to approach, with the court's permission, uh, with uh, what's been previously marked as People's Exhibit 128. I'm going to hand you that photo. What's that photo depict? This is a photo of the kitchen area, um, including the fridge and a garbage can, as well as some items on the floor. And those items on the floor, but at this point I'll move for the admission of People's 128. Yeah. Order received. No objection. Publication. Uh, what are uh, uh, these items right here? Uh, there's a pink and a white, looks like fabric. What are those items? Those were towels. Did you uh, look at those towels to see um, if there was anything on them? We did pick up those towels and do a visual examination on them. I did not see any areas of reddish brown staining that looks cons consistent with blood. I did note on one of the towels, to the best of my memory, it was the white towel, um, some um, apparent dried food and possible vomit. So you identified what you thought was possible vomit on one of the towels? Yes, possible vomit. Did, at some point, uh, did you find anything in the living room area of importance with red, red blood stain or red brown blood stain? We did not collect anything from the living room area. Did you move on to a, a bedroom that you uh, would have identified with a child? Yes. I'm going to hand you, um, I'm going to approach with some exhibits here. I'm going to hand you what's been previously admitted as People's Exhibit 119 and People's Proposed Exhibits 117 and 118. For your reference, uh, Ms. Irwin, there are numbers on the back. Let's start with uh, 118. My apologies, 119. What's that a photo of? This appears to be a photo of the corner of the child's bedroom. Uh, can we put that on the monitor, please? This is the, the bedroom as you saw it that night when you processed it? When we came into the scene, the bed was actually tipped over, leaning against the uh, window. Did you manipulate that mattress at all during you know, that bed during your uh, processing of the scene? Yes, after we took general photos, we did move the bed into a similar position that it appears to be in this photo. And did you process the bed? I did look at the bed with a bright light and alternate light source and did identify some areas with reddish brown staining as well as some fluorescent areas, yes. Uh, did you look on both sides of the bed? Yes. Did you look all around the room? Yes. What is uh, exhibit, or proposed exhibit that I handed you, 117? 117 is a photo from the hallway looking into the child's bedroom. So the light blue wall is the entr entryway into the child's bedroom, and there's a poster on this wall. Move for admission of 119. No objection. Thank you. And it's published on the screen here. I know it's sideways. Uh, can you read what it says on that poster? That poster says Gabrielle. And that was outside of the, the bedroom, the photo we just saw? It's the entryway into that bedroom. And I want to look at um, 118. Uh, what are we looking at here on 118? 118 is a photo of the dresser that was in the bedroom. So this would be right when you enter the um, entryway. This dresser is right in front and to the right. And uh, did you find anything of importance on that dresser? There was a Minion nanny cam that the agency requested us to hand over to them while we were processing the scene. I'm making a circular motion on the projection here. Is that what I'm circling? Is that that mini nanny cam? Yes. And you said you did what with that nanny cam? 
we began processing the scene. We didn't do anything with that item initially, and then the investigating agency, Sumter Township PD, requested um, that we provide that item to them. You provided that item to the Sumter Township then? Yes, I don't recall if they came in and unplugged it or if we unplugged it and handed it over to them. Uh, I want to um, approach and show you three other photographs. People's proposed exhibits 59, show 60, 61. Uh, just for the record, I. Uh, just for the record, I have provided counsel with the, all these photographs prior. Uh, let's start with uh, number 59. Uh, what are we looking at here on 59? This is a photograph of the west wall of the child's bedroom. Uh, this is that same bedroom that we saw in photograph 50, uh, or in the other photograph? Yes. And uh, what, uh, why did you take this photo? In the photo, as you can see, there are some tape scales up on the wall, as well as some smaller gray scales on the wall. And this photo was taken because once you um, see some closer photos, and it's a little difficult with the red wall to see, but there are some reddish brown stains on the wall, which I did test with a presumptive test and indicated the possible presence of blood. Did you identify this area to look at with your uh, alternate light source? Both with a bright light and an alternate light source. Move for the admission of uh, uh, 59 or for 59 at this point. No, I'm going to also, I suppose, move for the admission of 60 and 61, which are closer shots of the same. No objection. No objection. Let's look at uh, this is a this is the one I want right here. This is on screen as People's Exhibit 60. Uh, what is this? Uh, what are we looking at here? This is a closer image of the wall that was in the last photo. As you can see, there is a gray scale on the wall, and it's a little difficult to see, but it is labeled SH18-1, which is the number that the laboratory assigned to this scene. And it says item L9, which is the item of evidence that the swabs of this area would be, as well as my initials. And when you say gray scale, are you referring to this object right here? Yes. All right, and what uh, are we taking a picture of here? So as you can see, there's some darker staining on the top half and to the right um, part of the photo. Are you and talking about this part right here that I'm tracing? Yes, that's the darkest area. However, it does encompass all around there as well. Over in this rider area as well? There's some smaller spots there, yes. And you said you found what at that location? So that was reddish brown staining, and I did test that area. As you can see, there's black marker right above the um, gray scale, which is the area that I tested with the presumptive test, and that indicated the possible presence of blood. Okay. And you said the black marker, is that this little squiggly line right Correct. here? Correct, yes. Right. You said you did a presumptive test and it came back positive for blood? Yes. What do you do in that situation? What did you do with that? In this case, I collected a sample of this staining on a moistened cotton swab, and then that cotton swab is packaged into an envelope as evidence. Uh, did you, uh, I'm going to approach you and show you people's exhibit, proposed exhibit that is, 129, I'll retrieve the other one. What am I handing you a photo of right now? This is People's Exhibit 129. This appears to be a photo of the floor of the child's bedroom. And there is a evidence marker number 7, um, which is identifying a um, piece of material on the floor. And I'm going to move to the admission of that exhibit at this point. That's 129. No objection. Can we publish that? Okay. Thank you. What are we looking at? Uh, you said a piece of material. Uh, is that this big white object right here? Yes. And, and what, uh, were you able to identify what that was? Yes, this is actually an item that we removed from the mattress. It was the liner that was over top of the mattress, and so we collected this as um, our item number L7. Uh, with your either bright light or alternative light source, did you uh, notice anything on this? Yes, that there were some areas of fluorescence on this item. And that would indicate to you? Just that there's potentially a source of biological material or fluid on the item. 
I want to move next uh, to the laundry area. Uh, are you familiar with this area? Yes. Uh, did you uh, process or collect any evidence in the laundry area? Yes, we did. What did you first... Uh, let's go with these first. Proposed exhibits 81 and 120. What have I handed you there? This is an image of some towels that were on the floor in the laundry area, as well as a close-up image, or what appears to be a close-up image of one of the towels. Move for the admission of both of these exhibits. No objection. That's uh, for the record 81 and 120. Uh, let's publish uh, 81 here first. Uh, and uh, what are these objects right here? I believe those are two towels. All right. And what's this? Uh, what's this white object right here? That is the washing machine. Oh. All right. And can we put up 120. And uh, are, this photograph are those those same towels? Yes, it appears to be a close up of the green towel. Okay. And did you? Uh, I, I see some reddish uh, material here. Did you observe that same material that day? We did, I did observe that material, yes. Okay, and did you uh, make any observations or conclusions about what that might be? When we picked up that item, or one of my team members picked up the item, and I noticed a smell of uh, vomit. Uh, did you... Uh, Notice anything else in the laundry area? Yes, there was a garbage bag on the floor of the laundry area that was tied up. We did um, untie that garbage bag and remove some of the items from the garbage bag. Do you remember what color garbage bag it was? That was a white garbage bag on the floor. That was tied up? Yes. I'm going to approach and hand you what's previously been marked as People's Exhibit 68 through 79. You can take a moment and look through those. Do all those photographs fairly and accurately represent what you uh, saw in that garbage can, or that yeah. garbage bag? Yes, they do. Okay, move for the admission of people's proposed 68 through 79. No objection. Thank you. Can I have uh, 68 up on the monitor, please? Okay. What are we looking at here? This would be the um, contents of the garbage bag. You can see the garbage bag, the white garbage bag, and the laundry basket at this point. So this is after we had um, removed the items from the garbage bag and identified some of the items that we would collect with those yellow evidence markers. I see. You said this white garbage bag in the bottom left portion of the picture. Is that where all this garbage was contained? Yes. And it seems to be fairly methodically placed here. Is that uh, your doing? Between myself and my team members, yes, we went through the garbage bag and sort of isolated the pieces that we um, thought would be of interest or to collect. All right, can we get uh, 69 up on the screen, please? And uh, what's this a photograph of here? This is the garbage bag that the contents came from. This is a close-up photograph of it? Yes. And uh, what's it in there? This is in a laundry basket. Can I get 70, please? And what are we looking at here? This is a further close-up image of the garbage bag. And it appears that there's uh, a few objects still in there. Do you know what those were? Yes, there are a few objects remaining in there. It appears to be a laundry sheet as well as 
Um, to the best of my memory, a piece of gauze with some reddish brown staining. Okay, you can you can sort of see that in this right here. Is that what you're talking about, the reddish brown staining? Yes. And when you say laundry sheet, you mean one of those those dryer sheets? Yes. I get uh, 71 up. And uh, what are we seeing in this photograph uh, here uh, by placard number 17? What is that? That was um, clumps of apparent hair, and those clumps of hair did have um, apparent reddish brown staining on them, and I did swab an area which did give me a positive result with the presumptive test for blood. What did you do uh, as it relates to that hair after you did that presumptive testing? The hair would then um, have been collected. And did you collect that evidence? Yes. You placed that in uh, an evidence bag? Yes. And um, let's go to 72. I think that's, is that 72 is a depiction of the hair as a close-up. Is that that same hair we were just talking about? Yes, and this was given item number L17. And that number, when you give these numbers L17, I believe earlier you said L9, those numbers carry out through all of the processing that the state police has done? Yes, so every item of evidence um, eventually is underneath the crime scene number or the lab number SH18-1, and then from the beginning of the scene to the end, every piece of evidence that the lab collects is given an L number, which is just for lab. So the first piece of evidence is L1, L2, and so on. Thank you. Uh, what do we have up here? 72. Let me get number 73, please. Uh, what uh, are we looking at here? This is another piece of gauze that was in the garbage bag. This one did have some fainter areas of brown staining, which I did test and gave a positive result for the presumptive test for blood. And the line item number that was, or the lab number that was associated with that piece of gauze? 16. Right. I want to ask you as it relates to the gauze, how many, you mentioned before, how many different spots did you find used gauze in the house? To the best of my memory, there was gauze in this garbage bag as well as in a garbage can in the bathroom. Uh, give me number 74, please. What are we looking at here on number 74? This is what we collected as L19, which is a few pairs of gloves. Did you collect these? Yes. How many um, individual gloves, not pairs, how many individual gloves did you collect here? Once I got them back to the lab and processed them at the lab, I um, identified five different gloves. Were these contained uh, within another container inside the garbage bag, or were they just in there at large? To the best of my memory, they were loose in the garbage bag. Um, were they all clumped together like this initially? Yes. Let me get uh, number 75. Uh, what are we looking at? Uh, what's this big bottle up here, this brownish color bottle? That is a bottle of empty hydrogen peroxide. And this bottle, uh, this blue and white box there. I don't know exactly what it is. It appears to be a topical ointment box. Okay. And the one below it? A another topical ointment. Are you familiar with either the writing on either one of those boxes? I could read it. I'm not familiar with what they're used for. Okay. And what's this, uh, what's this object down here, this white object? That is an empty packaging, um, I believe, for the gauze. Okay. And these uh, bottles up here? Some prescription bottles. Thank you. Can I get the next uh, number, number 76? Uh, that's a close-up, it appears, of the same shot. Would you agree with that? Yes. 77, please. Uh, is this, uh, what's depicted in this shot here? This is a little further up of the same area. You can see those prescription bottles for the bottom, um, as well as our marker number 19 over the gloves. And then above that are some of the other miscellaneous um, pieces of um, garbage that were in that bag. Okay. Can I get 78, please? Uh, what's this, a photo of? This is a Burger King bag that was inside of the um, white garbage bag, and there appears to be some gauze as well as a glove inside of the Burger King bag. Did you do any presumptive testing on that gauze? Yes. And your results? I got a positive result. Okay. And um, 
Uh, we'll talk about the gloves in a minute. Can I get the next uh, 179 up on the screen, please? What's the fat data photo of, Mr. Irwin? The same area, a little closer up. <laughs> Those uh, ointment bottles that you collected, um, do you remember uh, as to how much of their contents were left in there? Uh, we did not actually collect the ointment bottles, just documented them. I recall that the hydrogen peroxide bottle was empty. I don't recall if those were empty boxes or if there were um, contents inside of the boxes. All right, I'm going to approach and show you. Been previously a bit and marked as people 62 through 67. Take a moment to glance through those photographs, please. a fair and accurate representation of uh, some things that you saw that night? Yes. Uh, and those objects and those photos, where are those photographs taken from? These are all taken from the bathroom. Move for the admission of people 62 through 67. No objection. Let's publish number 62, please. And what are we looking at here, Ms. Irwin? This is a photo of the sink in the bathroom. All right. Let's look over here. Do you remember what this brown bottle was right here? A uh, bottle of hydrogen peroxide. Okay. And uh, what's this uh, in the sink there? That was a, to the best of my memory, a Walmart bag um, containing some items of bandages, a package for um, latex or nitrile gloves, um, and then there were also some hats that were originally over top of this bag. Okay, can I get the next photograph up, number 63? This is a close-up photograph of that? Yes. Are you familiar with ni this nitrile gloves or latex gloves? Are you familiar with using those? We use nitrile and latex gloves at the laboratory. Would the gloves that you, um, did you have an opportunity to observe and use the gloves that you had just found some photos of, those blue and black gloves that we've seen the photograph? I did take them out at the laboratory and examine them, yes. Okay. Did they appear to be uh, nitrile exam gloves? When I examine the exam gloves, I don't attempt to determine if they're nitrile or latex. That's out of my area of expertise. Uh, can I get the next photograph up on the screen? It's going to be 64. Uh, what are we looking at here? This is a photo of the bathtub. Okay. And uh, you got a placard here, number 20. What are, what's in that bathtub? Um, number 20 is um, a marker for the pieces of apparent tissue in the bathtub. There's mm -hmm. also, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, when you say tissue, what do you mean? Um, apparent skin. And you were going to say uh, to this other object over here what that might be? That appeared to be a clump of hair. All right. Can I get uh, the next uh, photo up on the screen, 65, please? And uh, is that just a close-up of what we just saw? Yes. All right, 66. And that uh, appears to be a close-up depiction of just the skin. Would you agree with me? Yes. And 67. And uh, that uh, appears to be a close-up of the, the hair as well. Yes. There did appear, if I can add, to be some possible tissue in the hair as well. You say, tissue, when you say tissue, what do you mean? Um, tissue or apparent skin? You're not talking like toilet tissue? No. Okay, all uh, right. No, a substance, a, a biological substance, yes. Okay, good. Are you talking about this little whitish parts right here in the photograph? By yeah. the clump in the hair? Yes. All right, and those appear to be consistent with this other tissue that you identified earlier? Yes, and we collected the tissue that's to the left in the photograph. <coughs> And you collected uh, a sample of this tissue? Yes, we collected a few of the pieces. Okay. And did you collect a sample of this hair for testing as well? No. 
All right, you also said that you uh, made some observations in the, uh, let me take this photo down. You made some observations in the bathroom garbage can, I believe you said. What did you observe in that garbage can? I recall seeing a piece of gauze that also had some reddish brown staining and did test positive with the presumptive test for blood. That would be used gauze then? Yes. It's been previously marked as People's Exhibit 80 and 130. And People's Exhibit 80, please. What am I looking at in that photograph? Number 80 appears to be a um, gauze pad packaging. Okay. And uh, let's get, uh, I'll move for the admission of 80 at this point. No objection. Let's get 80 up on the projector here. And uh, do you remember what location this was taken? This was in the master bedroom. And uh, kind of hard to tell on this, uh, but there, uh, how close is this mat, these gauze to the door in the master bedroom? Without seeing a overall photo of this area, I don't recall well enough. You remember the TV being on the wall that bought your stuff against the bathroom? Yes. And uh, would you have entered the room from to the left of this photograph? Yes, to the best of my memory, these were on the TV or around the TV, and the doorway is to the left of the TV. And photograph 130, please. This Move for the admission of 130. No objection. All right, and what are we looking at in 130? This is a photograph of what we collected as item L15, which is a pair of size 4 underwear that were found in the dryer. And they appear uh, to have some uh, discoloration uh, on the inside and the rear of that. Did you do any testing on the discoloration? Eventually I did back at the lab. Were you able to reach any uh, holes? Did you test that for blood? No, I did not. All right, we can get this one off of the screen. All right, after uh, completing the scene investigation, did you uh, compile all that information into a report? Yes. And that's going to be, uh, well, I'll show it to you. Mr. Redden, proposed People's Exhibit 91. What have I handed you there? Thank you, sir. This is a copy of my report, which is record number one for laboratory number SH18-1. It's four pages in length. It has my signature on the last page. Does this report have to deal with your crime scene um, processing? Yes, this is a report essentially detailing what we did at the crime scene. Move for the admission of People's uh, 91. Any objection? No objection. After you processed the scene, um, you stated earlier that you collected some evidence, biological evidence for testing? Yes. What did you do with that biological evidence after you collected it? All of the evidence was packaged either in envelopes or paper bags and sealed at the scene. That evidence was all brought back to the Sterling Heights laboratory with us and put into storage until I eventually took the items back out to perform testing on some of the items. And did you do the testing on those items? Yes, I did. Can you explain um, to the jury uh, when you are, well, were you preparing these items for DNA analysis? Yes, some of the items I did um, prep samples for DNA testing. Okay, so for the items uh, that you prep for DNA testing, I'll just do it this way. I'm going to approach and show you people's uh, proposed exhibit 92. Do 
you uh, recognize that document? Yes, I do. How many pages in length is it? Uh, this is six pages in length. And who authored this document? I did. And what was the, uh, the purpose of authoring this document? This is record number two, and it is a record of the testing that was done by myself at the NB Biology Unit. I'd like to draw your attention to, let's start with uh, page four. Uh, it's SH 18-1-L9. I'll just refer to you by the L numbers from this point. Um, what was L9? L9 was the um, stain from the children's bedroom wall. That was the stain on the red wall that we saw the photograph of earlier? Yes. Okay. And did you do a test as it relates to that back of the lab? Yes, so the staining again was tested at the scene with the presumptive test for blood, um, which indicated the possible presence of blood. When I had the swab back at the laboratory, I did an additional test on the item to see if there was an indication of human blood, and I did get a positive result, which indicated the presence of human blood on that swab. Do you do that additional test just to be sure? Yes, if there's any reason to believe that the blood could potentially have come from an animal or um, something along those lines, then we do perform an additional test to make sure that it's human blood before sending it for DNA testing. And after, and did you get a result as to L19 based upon that testing? The swab did go for DNA testing. L9, my apologies. Um, it did go for DNA testing. I am not sure what the results were for that. So the, the human test that you, you talked about, that came back positive? I'm sorry, yes, I did get a positive result for the human blood test. And then you sent that out for DNA? Yes, that's correct. Do you have to do anything special to uh, get that prepped for DNA processing, or is that something that those analysis do? So uh, my end of it would be to choose how much to send for DNA testing. In this case, I sent a portion of the swab, about half of the staining that was on the swab. And then I put that um, piece of cotton into a labeled tube. And that tube is labeled with the unique identifier. Um, and then that is packaged and sealed up. And then it's sent to the Northville Laboratory, in this case, for DNA testing. Thank you. Now I want to direct your attention uh, further down on page 4L13. Uh, that was for that uh, mattress uh, that we saw, for that mattress lining that you indicated earlier that we saw a photograph of. Did you do any blood testing on L13? Um, yes, if I could clarify, the photo uh, that we saw earlier was of item L7, which is the mattress liner. My apologies, L7. Um, yes, and L7, I did not do any blood testing. There did not appear to be any areas. Um, visually consistent with blood. Did you collect another item uh, that was different than the mattress liner that we saw a photograph of? I don't know if there would have been a photograph of it, of it other than in the general photographs, um, but L13 is the mattress cover, which was a full cover that zipped around the mattress. Did you do any blood testing on L13, the mattress cover? Yes. And your results? Um, that was a positive for the presumptive test that I performed at the scene, which indicated the possible presence of blood. And again, I did a test for the presence of human blood at the laboratory, and I got a positive result. Thank you. Now, I want to direct your attention to the bottom of page 4, L17. Uh, what was uh, L17? L17 was the clumps of hair that we saw in the photos earlier. Did you send that out for DNA testing? Yes, in this case I did the presumptive testing at the scene, which indicated the possible presence of blood. At the lab, I swabbed that area of possible blood and sent the swab forward for DNA testing. I'd like to direct your attention now to page 5 of your report as it relates to uh, multiple objects under L19. I see on your report those are broken down into L19A through D. What's the purpose of that? L19A through D were the gloves that were from the garbage um, bag that was in the laundry room. And I broke them down separately um, to sort of individualize the different gloves that were collected. So there were two individual blue gloves, and then there was a third blue glove, which as I uh, went to pull um, right side out, I noted that there was another glove inside of that glove. And so since those two were um, pumped together, those got one item, which was 19C, L19C. And then L19D was a black glove. 
Did you, uh, I want to talk about uh, sub A, that's a blue glove. Uh, did you do any testing for blood on that? Yes, I did. And then your results on that? A positive, um, which indicated the possible presence of blood. Okay. Did you prepare uh, that for DNA testing? Yes, I did. And how uh, did you go about preparing those gloves for DNA testing? So for L19A, I swabbed an area of the possible blood as one sample, which would then go on to DNA as L19A1D. And then I also swabbed um, what appeared to be the inside of the glove for possible skin cells. And that would go as a se second sample to DNA testing as item L19A2D. Okay, so you swabbed the inside and the outside of the glove with two separate swabs and sent them at subparts of A? Yes, two different samples, one of them being of possible blood and one being of possible skin cells inside of the glove. And did you do this for 19B? Yes. Okay. And did you also do a blood test uh, on 19B as well? Yes, I did. And your results as it relates to 19B? I have a positive for the presumptive um, test for blood, indicating a possible presence of blood. And you took an inside and an outside swab of that glove? Yes. I want to talk to you about the pair of uh, blue gloves. Uh, did you do a presumptive test for blood on that? I did. There was one uh, area that looks like it could be consistent with blood. In this case, uh, I got a negative result, so there was no indication of blood on this item. Okay. Did you swab this pair of gloves for DNA? I did still swab what appeared to be the inside of these gloves as one sample. Did you break those down into four categories rather than two since there were two gloves in this? No, in this case, because they appeared to be a pair of gloves that were, again, worn inside of the other, I swabbed the inside of both gloves using the same set of swabs. Um, typically, when I'm swabbing for skin cells on an item like this, I'll take a moistened swab followed up by a dry swab, and then both of those swabs get packaged together in the same tube, which then went for DNA testing. I'd like to ask you about uh, L19D, that's the black glove. Uh, did you do a presumptive test for blood on that? Yes, I did. And your result? Negative. And did you swab that for DNA analysis? Yes, I swabbed the, again, what appeared to be the inside of the glove um, for possible skin cells for DNA. Did you send those out for DNA? Yes. Okay, and I also want to ask you about L20. Um, what was L20? L20 was the possible tissue or skin from the bathtub. Okay, and what did you do as it relates to L20? At the scene, I did test one of the pieces of um, apparent skin or tissue with the presumptive blood test, and I got a positive result, which indicated the possible presence of blood. Um, at the laboratory, I simply took the item out, examined it, and took a small piece of the apparent skin and put it into a tube for DNA testing. You say apparent skin, did it appear like skin to you upon detailed uh, manipulation of it? It did. Once I got it, it had been um, somewhat hardened and um, a little bit stiffer than what it appeared to be at the scene. Um, I did note at the scene and at the lab that there appeared to be ridges on the item, um, which could be consistent with uh, ridges that you see on skin. Did you send part of that tissue, that skin sample, out for DNA testing? Yes. Uh, I'm not sure if I have, but I'll move for the admission. Uh, did all of this that we just talked about in your processing, did you compile that into that report, People's Proposed Exhibit 92, that you have in your hand? Yes, I did. Move for the admission of People's 92. Any objection? No. no. At this point, uh, permission to approach and retrieve that exhibit? No. Thank you. People have no further questions. Very good. This, how, I
is is that I have been able to kind of move my docket a little bit. So let's say that we'll be here for you. On the 14th, we'll go from uh, 1 to 4, about maybe about the same time, okay? Um, we're moving along, but it's just only so much you can do if you're going to do it right. You know what I'm saying? And both sides are committed to making sure that they uh, present a quality presentation to the jurors so that they can, you can make a decision, okay? But we're moving along, okay? Believe me or not, we really are. And after some of the eyewitness scientific, it'll move a lot faster, okay? All right? Very good. I will see you Friday at 1 o'clock. All rise for the jury. Not when you're ready to go. Yeah, that's she's not available. Yeah. No. I the last the last person I intend to bring the jury back out, please, at this time. Okay. I do have one. Let me do one thing at a time, please. Okay. And then we can do whatever you need to. We're gonna be in the front of it. Judge, I need to. And, um, I misspoke that there needs to be admission of three pieces of evidence before we no, just take it. No, no, it's not going to happen to you. You just do it. I look. No, okay? Oh, I'll just do it right now. She said not today. We'll clear it up. I'll get it. All right, so we need to admit 117 and 92. And we'll go over it right now. Okay. But is that okay? Can we do that fresh? Of course, Your Honor. Can I excuse for the day, Your Honor? You may. Thank okay. you. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Marie. Yeah. Send uh, the speed up on as well. Now, don't leave it. Just wait. You, you know to come back here at 10 o'clock on Friday. 10 o'clock on Friday, yes. Would you like me to wait in here until? No. Just let them know 2 o'clock on Friday. Would you do that? Yeah, Jeff. Thank you so much. Of course, okay. says, don't forget those things that we need to get done. All right. All right. All right.